Hello YouTube, uh, Bill Griffith back again. Uh, many years ago, I created a uh, uh, chatbot using IBM Watson Assistant for frequently asked questions. So that works well. <clears throat> that is when you um, when you have a uh, question that you pre-train. So in my earlier video up here, I walked through how to build a Watson X assistant that answers questions about ordering pizza. That is what I have here. Here's my pizza bot in Watson assistant. And then you have these actions where you sort of pre-train it. And I can say, I want to order a pizza. So I'm anticipating the kinds of things that a customer may want to order. And then uh, if they ask it, then I sort of give it some examples and then it knows that this is the action that I want. So this is just general natural language processing, natural language understanding uh, capabilities within Watson Assistant. And it's similar to a frequently asked question. It's something that I frequently ask. However, in some cases I might have something I want a virtual assistant to do that's not frequently anticipated. See, this is sort of what I'm showing here. This is the frequently asked. So I train it with specific uh, utterances, specific types of statements that customers will say, and that allows me to find uh, specifically which action to use in Watson X Assistant and then help the customer through sort of that journey of that action. However, Watson X Assistant has a new capability called a conversational search where I can actually search knowledge bases. Let me show that feature. So uh, within Watson X Assistant, there's a new feature uh, that I can use Watson Discovery as a knowledge base. I can uh, use Elasticsearch, and I'll show Elasticsearch today. But what this does is for the un the unfrequent or the infrequent uh, questions. When I don't know the, um, I didn't anticipate that when I'm training it. So I just want to search a, a repository of features. Now, uh, Watson Discovery is a knowledge base that integrates with Watson X Assistant, and that's been around for uh, some time. Uh, to do this, adding search, you see here in the documentation, I click the uh, adding search uh, tab, and this is what uh, many customers have been using. Uh, however, Elasticsearch is a vector database, which just means that it does more semantic, sort of uh, uh, semantic uh, uh, searching uh, and more AI, uh, less keyword oriented uh, searching. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to show here. What this allows is what's called the retrieval augmented generation, the RAG pattern. So effectively what you do is you ask the question to Watson X Assistant like you normally do, like up here when I say I want to order a pizza. Uh, but this time the Watson Assistant isn't trained on that specific question. Let's say I say, ask, do you sell tacos? Well, I didn't pre-train it for that. So then I configure Watson X Assistant to say, well, let's go search a knowledge base. So Watson X Assistant then calls out to a knowledge base, in this case, Watson X Discovery, which is uh, elastic search for us. Could be Watson Discovery, could be Cell SharePoint, could be any other type of knowledge base that you want. It takes that information with the original question, sends that to a large language model, in this case, IBM's Granite large language model, to say, okay, uh, large language model, Here's the original question. Here's a set of documents or uh, paragraphs that seem to match the question from our semantic knowledge base. Add those together and now answer the question with this newfound grounded information, this new knowledge, and then reply back with a response. This is pretty powerful. This is allowing you to answer questions and have an understanding uh, with just grounding the large language with this new information. This is incidentally also used just in accuracy. So the problem with large language models is they're trained many months before. They take a snapshot of data, maybe six months before today, because they take three or four months to train depending on the size of them. And so if I ask them, you know, hey, who won the Super Bowl last night? Well, if that wasn't frequent, then it's going to give me old data. 
So if I have new data in my knowledge base, I can layer that on top and then get a more um, a new answer, a more uh, uh, accurate uh, answer. So let me show how this is done. Okay, so I'm at the IBM Cloud. As you see here in the URL, I click the catalog link. That takes me to a set of services. Uh, one specific service that I want to use is the Watts, the database for Elasticsearch. I like this search engine because it provides semantic search. Uh, so that we'll use that one. <clears throat> and it can work with um, Watson X Assistant. So in here, I go in and provision. Now I can use uh, shared. <coughs> and I want to use platinum. Uh, instead of the default of Enterprise. Uh, Platinum gives me more of those elastic search uh, features that I want, and then I do uh, create. So, okay, now I've already done that, so now I'm going to go over to the one that I've uh, previously uh, created. <clears throat> okay, so this is one that I have previously created. I'm going to need these URLs. I'm going to need uh, users and all of this information. This is the information that I'll need in Watson X Assistant to connect. One of the first things that you need to do is create a user ID, which I did here. But let me show you how that's done. I create a new credential. I'll just call it that, leave these as defaults, and do add. Uh, I will need these, so I'm going to expand these. I'll delete this for security reasons after, but you'll see down in here, I expanded this service credentials, so create a new one. In this case, my original demo, I called it Pixa RAG Admin. It's um, for databases for Elasticsearch. It then creates these credentials, and you'll see here, here's a username and password pair. I will use those to connect to this service from Watson X Assistant. Okay, so let me show you how that is <clears throat> done. Okay, so back over here, I'm just going to create a new virtual assistant called uh, Pixa Rag Pattern. Create an assistant. Now, in this case, I'm going to have no frequently asked questions. You see here, this is this new feature I'm talking about. Conversational search is GA'd. Go to setup <clears throat> and configure it. So that's what I want to do here. I clicked uh, that button. I do search. So I click add. I'm going to use elastic search. So now it wants to know the URL for how to connect to that elastic search database. So again, if I go back over here to my databases tab, I expand this, you'll see the URL is down here. Where is it? So I'm going to copy this, go back over here to my configuration, prefix it with HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, paste that URL. Which port is it running on? Well, if I go over here, you see it runs on this port, so not on... 443, which is the default for HTTPS. And then I want to use basic <coughs> um, basic authentication. I could use API keys as well. And now I need the Elasticsearch username and password. Here's the username. Copy that and paste. Then I need the password. Cop if I expand it again, where's the password? Copy that. And then paste. Okay, so now I say next, which index? Well, I'm going to use the upload documents. Now within Elasticsearch, you can create uh, indexes. You can get very granular and very sophisticated in the features of Elasticsearch, but for this demo, I'm just going to use the uh, sort of this beta feature where I can just upload documents and an index is done for me, sort of in this low-code uh, fashion. So I say, okay, that looks good, and I do save. So now it's saying, you know, what do you want to put in your knowledge base? So as I mentioned over here, I answered questions about uh, pizza, and I pre-trained 
That's so in in my previous video, you saw that I pre-trained. This is frequently asked. So I built into my menu into Watson Assistant the list of menu items. And that's going to be more accurate because that's sort of anticipated. It's going to be a smaller model. It's going to be more cost effective. So if you can anticipate the questions that people will ask and you pre-train your AI with that, that's going to be very effective. And we've been doing that for a few years. Uh, it's just that you have to, you know, anticipate that information. Um, but let's say that uh, my menu changes frequently and I don't want to uh, keep up with this. So I just want to have a menu that I upload and then people can ask questions about that menu. So let's go search, say, uh, Austin, uh, Austin uh, Pizza menu. And I want PDF specifically. Let's find a PDF one. How about Austin's menu? Here we go. So we got a PDF uh, menu. So I'm going to save that. Okay, so now I have that menu. So let me pull that uh, up. Okay, so you see it's got other things beyond pizzas. Now I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to upload that document right there. And so now it is uh, upload it. It's going to chunk that menu. First off, it's going to read the PDF, extract all of the text from the from the PDF, and then break it up into paragraphs and do semantic vectorizing. So effectively, a vector database behind the scenes. Elasticsearch is doing this for me uh, with the commands coming from Watson X Assistant, and so it puts it in there for me. So then I can query questions against things that are on this menu. So let me show you how that's done. Okay, so now my Elasticsearch is configured and I've uploaded a PDF. <clears throat> I'm going to close that and back over here to my new uh, virtual assistant. You see there's no actions. Uh, but now I can do preview. It has no training whatsoever, right? Uh, so now I want to ask it in here. I look at this and say, you know, uh, as I mentioned in my previous PowerPoint here, do you sell tacos? So I'm going to ask it, do you sell tacos? And so now it's searching that vector database from that PDF that I uploaded. And you say, and it says yes. So using Watson uh, X.AI's uh, large language model, the Granite model specifically, uh, it digest it this calls out to elastic search to vectorize all of this and so then when i ask that questions on tacos it says yes so somewhere in here are tacos okay street tacos carnitas chicken shrimp so street steak tacos yep carnitas so you see here it found what's on the menu in here and in fact i can go further and ask it like how much are fish tacos. You see there's the fish tacos right here where my cursor is moving. So now I'm going to ask that. And again, I haven't trained it for anything. All I'm doing is uploading this PDF and then asking questions against it. You see here it knows it got the price. So as mentioned at the beginning, <clears throat> this is a new feature, conversational search in Watson X Assistant. And so I showed you how to set up Elasticsearch as the backend repository. <coughs> and then this allows me to sort of augment the capabilities of Watson X Assistant. I can pre-train it with frequently asked questions and uh, guide a user on a journey uh, with actions. Um, you know, if somebody's wanting to pay their bill, then I want that to be sort of a pre trained action that I actually walk them through uh, paying their bill at say Bank of America or something like that if I have a, a bank uh, and I want to integrate and connect things together then I want an action. Uh, if however I want to just search knowledge bases and ask questions uh, against a repository of trusted data so not just internet data maybe this is data that's uh, proprietary to my organization and I want my employees to be able to ask questions about, you know, vacation policies and um, sick leave and all of those types of things that they could, uh, that I could upload into 
uh, this uh, into a repository, and then Watson X Assistant can ask questions against it, against it, against it for me. So hopefully this has been helpful, and uh, feel free to watch these other videos where I walk through sort of how to build the Watson uh, X Assistant and then how to integrate it with Cloud Pack for Business Automation to actually drive automated action behind the scenes. Uh, and so then this video here was really around retrieval augmented generation, the RAG pattern, uh, which is one of the most uh, popular uh, large language or uh, generative AI uh, use cases because doing this level of uh, you know, chatting against content in the past required a lot more examples. Uh, and so large language models bring so much pre-trained uh, uh, knowledge of, you know, the, the language that it's, uh, that you're interacting with it in, that it can, uh, you know, solve some of these ca use cases in far less training, far less uh, effort than in the past. So um, lots of trials available for this type of stuff. Watson X Assistant has a free trial. Watson X AI has a free trial. In Watson X.AI, you can actually do the same kind of thing and then expose it as an API and then call it. This was really just sort of a low code uh, 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 demo to show you the same kind of capabilities. Thanks for watching.